Hello everyone, my name is Xiaoping. I'm the Managing Director of XP Education. Uh, thanks for following and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Now today, uh, I'd like to present you guys the next lecture series, which is on the Keynesian 45 degree dome. Now more specifically, uh, we're going to cover lecture 9 and 10. Now, first of all, in today's uh, video, I want to cover what is a Keynesian 2 sector model. Okay, what exactly is a Keynesian 2 sector model? First of all, Output is equal to C plus IP plus G plus net export, yes? So this is the national accounting identity. Now obviously this is our famous four sector model. If I were only to include a two sector model, this means that we only look at the consumption and the planned investment, okay? Now, under Keynesian 45 degree diagrams, how exactly do we actually capture this model? Now the best way to do so is to draw yourself a diagram. So, on the x-axis is where we have the output, on the vertical axis is where we have the planned aggregate expenditure, yes? Now, we have the 45 degree line, which is the 45 degree line, okay? Now, first of all, uh, one thing I want to stress is that this 45 degree line uh, is essentially an imaginary line, okay? So, it doesn't exist, it just helps you to draw that anything along the 45 degree line is where PAE is going to be equal to the uh, output. Okay, now the way you do so is always draw the uh, planned aggregate expenditure curve first. So this is our PAE zero, okay? Now which means that the economy initially starts at point A, correct? Now once you do point A, I want you guys to take a line down, yes? Because this will correspond to the potential level of output, okay? Now, once you have done that, the next part is to pretty much say, okay, we have the planned investment, yes? We have the IP, okay? Now, once we have the IP, now we have the savings curve, which will go like this, okay? So the savings curve ensures what we're trying to do is that at this particular point here, uh, it's going to be the little a, okay? So, how does exactly does a Keynesian 45 degree diagram works is that this correspondent in terms of PAE is equal to output, which also equal to when saving is equal to the planned investment. Okay? Now, hypothetically, in this case, we're going to have our some sort of a consumption curve, which goes like this, and this is our consumption curve. Okay? Now, how exactly uh, does this work? Now, imagine that there is an exogenous decrease in terms of planned investment. Okay? So if there's a large decrease in terms of exogenous uh, investment, what's going to happen to the planned investment is that it will initially decrease, yes, from IP0 to IP1, okay? Now this means that we will end up at point C, and that will correspond uh, to the new equilibrium output called Y start uh, 1, okay? So this is Y start 0. Now, I want you guys to take up a green dot line all the way up to the 45 degree diagram. And then, which means that, remember, because Y is equal to C plus IP, correct? Now, which means that if there is a large exogenous decrease of the planned investment, this means that the planned aggregate exponential will also decrease by the same magnitude, yes? So, for example, imagine it comes at this particular line here to PAE 1, okay? So, you will end up at big C and small C, okay? Now, the next part is to really understand how does the economy move from A to C. Now, many of you probably think that we will jump from A to C, probably movement along the 45 degree line. But unfortunately, uh, this is not correct, yes? So, for example, the 45 degree line is just there to help you uh, in terms of draw your Keynesian 45, but we will always go through some sort of an intermediate point called point B, and this will correspond to the little b at the bottom, yes? Now, whenever you characterize the transition, you have to tell yourself a story. Now, how does it work? It goes like this. At point B, the planned aggregate exponential is now clearly less than output, yes? So from a graphical perspective, at point B, 
the PAE is now smaller than the uh, output, yes? So how does it mean? If the exponential is less than the output, this will lead to a unplanned increase in inventories, okay? Now I want you to think about this, okay? If the amount of exponential is 1000, and at that particular year you produce 1200, now which means that you have a sudden increase of 200 units, which is our inventories, yes? Now remember, it must be an unplanned increase in inventories. Now if you are a firm, okay? Now imagine that you have a sudden rush in terms of inventories, how do you feel? This will clearly act as what we call a signal to cut back on your production, yes? So essentially, if you have an unplanned increase in terms of your inventories, it will signal to the firm to reduce production, okay? And now remember, based on this circular flow of income, a reduction in terms of production means that we have reduction in terms of output. A reduced output implies a reduced income, yes? A reduced income implies a reduced induced consumption and a reduced induced savings. Now what does it mean? Have a look. Because consumption is equal to C bar plus the marginal propensity to consume times by output minus the taxation, yes? Now, which means that because we are producing less, this means that we have lower amount of income, which ultimately means that if we have some sort of a fixed marginal propensity to consume, it will lead to a induced decrease in terms of the consumption, yes? And it will lead to a induced savings, and will be movement along the PAE to characterize the transition from point B all the way to point C, okay? Once we reach point C, the economy is again back to equilibrium, whereby we end up at a lower uh, equilibrium output, okay? So this is essentially the Keynesian two-sector model where we have some sort of a exogenous decrease in planned investment, okay? Now, essentially, uh, these are the recipes that you will need in terms of characterizing how does the economy uh, transit from the initial stage to point B, and there will be the movement along the planned aggregate expenditure, and then the movement along the savings, and the movement along the consumption curve. So, the next point I want to talk about is that how do we discuss about this paradox of thrift, okay? So, what does it mean by this paradox of thrift? Okay. <clears throat> now, first of all, what exactly is thrift? Now, thrift can be thought of savings, yes? So, this is what we call the paradox of thrift, okay? Now, what this means now, have a look. Imagine that we have an increase in savings, yes? Now, this means that maybe we have a, an increased availabilities of funds that can be used for investment purposes. However, according to the Keynesian 45, the paradox of thrift suggested that having a high savings will actually induces a reduction in terms of the potential output. Now, for example, here we go. Consumption is equal to C bar, which is the exogenous consumption, plus little c, which is the marginal propensity to consume, times by y minus t, yes? Now, which means that savings is going to be equal to negative c bar plus 1 minus c times by 1 minus t, yes? So 1 minus c is essentially the marginal propensity to save, okay? So how exactly uh, do we actually use that? Now, have a look. Imagine saving increases, yes? This means that consumption must decrease, isn't it, yes? So for example, the total amount of income you have is equal to $100. Now, if you spend uh, $20, yes, that means the other $80 uh, will be saved, yes? So whatever is not consumed uh, will be saved. Now, how do we use a Keynesian 45 degrees to analyze 
uh, the impact of this paradox of thrift. Now again, we require a very beautiful looking uh, diagram, okay? So, here we go. Now, again, when you start the analysis, we'll have the output on the x-axis, and we'll have the planned aggregate exponential on the vertical axis, okay? So we'll have the 45 degree line. Now you start with the PA, yeah? So planned aggregate exponential zero, and the economy is initially at point BA, and then you draw a dotted line downwards, and this classifies as an initial equilibrium output, okay? Then, you're gonna have the planned investment zero, and then you'll have the savings curve intersecting the planned investment, so this is S0, which corresponds to point A and A. Remember, big A will correspond to a small A, okay? Now, obviously I forgot something, which is the consumption curve here, okay? So we have the consumption curve right here, okay? Now, paradox drift suggests that, now what happens if there is an increase um, in terms of the savings, yes? Now, if savings has exogenous increase, now this means that the savings curve will actually shift upwards, yes? Have a look. The savings curve will shift upwards, yes? Now, what this means is that this particular intersection will correspond to point C because now this will be the new equilibrium output. Call this Y star 1, okay? Now, the trick is that you need to use a ruler and do a dotted line all the way touching towards the PAE because this is where the new plan aggregate exponential must intersect, yes? So, we say that the plan aggregate exponential, PAE1, will shift downwards, yes? Which means that we'll move from big C, and obviously the consumption will also shift down in proportional terms, okay? So, I want to stress here, the exogenous increase in savings, this two gap here, yes, must be exactly equal to the decrease in terms of consumption and the decrease in terms of the planned aggregate exponential. Now, even though that my graph doesn't look exactly right, but the gap here and the gap between the consumption and the gap between the planned aggregate exponential must exactly be the same, okay? So, how does the economy uh, transit? Again, using the same terminologies, we will go through point B, yes? So we'll go through point B, and we have our little B here, yes? So again, the same types of analysis go like this. At point B, we have this unplanned uh, increase in inventory, uh, which means that there will be a signal to the firm to cut back on production, and obviously having a lower production means lower output, Lower output means lower income. Lower income means lower induced consumption and a lower induced savings, yes? So which means that you can see will be a movement along the new PA, will be the movement along the consumption curve and will be a movement along the savings curve all the way to point C is reached, yes? Now once point C is reached, as you can see, is that once C is reached, we end up at Y star 1, yes? So based on the paradox of thrift, it indicated that if we have an increase in saving, it is in fact bad for the economy. Now, why is it bad? It is because that the output has shrunk, yes? So essentially, this covers the key points uh, in terms of lecture 9, whereby to sum up, so in today's short clip, I've covered the Keynesian 45-degree uh, diagrams for the two-sector model, and also I've covered this concept about the paradox of thrift. Now, in the next video, I'll cover this multiply effect whereby we include the taxations, endogenous, and exogenous. Now, I hope that you guys enjoyed the short clip. Now, if you like us, please subscribe, and obviously we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you for watching.